So an example of the unit tangent, unit normal, and binormal vectors, we are given a space curve, r of t is equal to t squared, t, uh, 2 thirds t cubed, and t. We're going to find the unit tangent vector, unit normal vector, and binormal vector at the ordered triple 1, 2 thirds, 1. So this is yet another situation where we were given a point instead of a value of t. So interpreting these com component functions as x, y, and z, we'll set x equal to the x component, we'll set y equal to the y component, and we'll set z equal to the z component. Uh, if you're going to solve any of these, I would recommend solving the z component because, well, it's already done. So once we find our appropriate derivatives, magnitudes, and whatnot, we'll be plugging in t equals 1. So with that in mind, let's start with a derivative, as we typically do. Three derivatives, all three will be making use of the power rule. That'll be 2t, 2t squared, and 1. <clears throat> then we'll take the magnitude of this vector so that we can properly create our unit tangent vector. <clears throat> so this will be equal to the square root of 2t quantity squared plus 2t squared quantity squared plus 1 squared. I'm going to write this in a slightly different order than what I used here because I noticed that we're going to have a polynomial, so I'm going to put the biggest power first. Squaring 2t squared gives us 4t to the fourth. Squaring 2t gives us 4t squared. And squaring 1 gives us... Let me grab my calculator. Oh, that's going to be 1. All right, good stuff. Uh, as a polynomial, this does factor really nicely, and it's super convenient that it factors this way. It's almost like they were trying to set us up for success in this problem. The square and the square root will cancel each other out very nicely, and we will wind up with 2t squared plus 1. Normally we would see absolute value of 2t squared plus 1, but this quantity is already guaranteed to be positive, so we're not going to have to worry about that. So unit tangent vector, we're going to take the derivative that we just got, and we are going to divide it through all three components by r prime of t. So I'll take each of these and divide by 2t squared plus 1. So first component, 2t over 2t squared plus 1. Second component will be 2t squared over 2t squared plus 1. And the last one will be 1 over 2t squared plus 1. Now our next task, because the calculus is not done, we're going to need to differentiate this. To create the unit normal vector, we do the exact same two things with capital T as what we just did with little r. So we take a derivative. This derivative, oh, it's going to be so good. Because, well, the first two components at the very least will need the use of the quotient rule. The last one, we can simply use the chain rule. So for the first one, this is going to be low d high less high d low over the square of what's below baller. We'll do the same thing for the second fraction. Low d high less high d low over the square of what's below. Now for this last one, I'm just going to treat this as 2t squared plus 1 raised to the negative 1 power and apply the chain rule as I differentiate the negative 1th power. Negative 1st power? Negative 1th power. It'll be negative 2t squared plus 1 to the negative 2 power times 4t. So the negative comes from the power rule, the 4t comes from the chain rule, and the rest comes from the power rule. Now all of this is going to need to be simplified a bit, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let's see, distribute this, that'll be 4t squared minus 8t squared, and then we'll have a positive 2, so this will be 2 minus 4t squared over 2t squared plus 1 quantity squared. On this one we have a 2t squared times 4t minus 2t squared times 4t, so those will cancel each other out. We'll be left with 4t over 2t squared plus 1 squared. The last one stays as is. So really fun fact, and you could verify this using a dot product, 
but uh, the vector that we just got and the unit tangent vector are in fact going to be uh, orthogonal to each other. We investigated that in the proof of the formula for the curvature. Now that we've taken this derivative, our calculus is technically done. So what I'd like to do at this point is go ahead and start plugging in some numbers. So first off, t of 1, which is requested <clears throat> back as part of the original problem, we head right up here and we plug in t equals 1. Your numerators will be 2, 2, and 1. Your denominators will be 3, 3, and 3. So this will be 2 thirds, 2 thirds, and 1 third. For t prime of 1, this is where I'm going to be plugging in little t equals 1 to all three of these. Your denominators will all be 3 squared. So denominator of 9, denominator of 9, and denominator of 9. First numerator is going to be 2 minus 4. That'll be negative 2. And we'll have 4 times 1, and negative 4 times 1. This is not a unit vector, but it is orthogonal to the given vector. To turn it into a unit vector, we're going to need to go ahead and find the magnitude of this vector. That's going to be equal to the square root of negative 2 ninths quantity squared plus 4 ninths quantity squared plus negative 4 ninths quantity squared. Now by my calculation, that numerator is going to be uh, 4 plus 16 plus 16, denominator is 81 throughout. Good news is that turns out really nicely. You can either apply the radical first or reduce the fraction first. Regardless, we're going to see a total of 2 thirds for that. Now, unfortunately, I've run out of room on this page, so pause the video, get caught up on your notes, and then we'll go ahead and uh, start a new page. So the normal vector, unit normal vector, uh, evaluated at 1, that's going to be t prime of 1 divided by the magnitude of t prime of 1. t prime of 1, I'm grabbing this from the previous page, is negative 2 ninths, 4 ninths, negative 4 ninths, and we're going to divide that whole thing by 2 thirds. Now, do bear in mind that dividing by 2 thirds is the same as saying multiply by 3 halves. So, I'm going to multiply all three of these fractions by 3 halves. 2's will cancel, the denominator reduces, uh, that'll be 2 thirds, and then negative 2 thirds. So, very similar in structure to t of 1 in the sense that we've got 1's uh, and 2's in the numerator and 3's in the denominator. <clears throat> So finally, we'll create our binormal vector evaluated at 1 by taking t of 1 and crossing that with n of 1. So we'll set up our 3 by 3 determinant. t of 1, I'm grabbing this from the previous page once again. That'll be 2 thirds, 2 thirds, 1 third, and then n of 1. That prime shouldn't be there. Please ignore that. Uh, n of 1, that'll be negative 1 third, 2 thirds, and negative 2 thirds. Recopy the first two columns. Gonna give you a little slashy slashy. Hope you don't mind. So, slash, 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 wunterslausch. We will get negative 2 thirds times 2 thirds times i, that is negative 4 ninths i. Negative one third times one third times j, that'll be minus one ninth j. And then we'll get a positive four ninths k. We are going to subtract, that'll be negative two ninths k plus two ninths i minus four ninths k. No, j. jk, lol. Now we get to actually combine all of these together. For our i component, I see negative 4 ninths minus 2 ninths, that's negative 6 ninths, which reduces to negative 2 thirds. For j, we have negative 1 ninth 
minus negative four ninths, that'll be positive three ninths, which reduces to one third. And finally, for the k component, we have four ninths, and we are subtracting negative two ninths, that is positive six ninths, which reduces to positive two thirds. Now, if you want to verify your answers, you need to make sure that they are all mutually orthogonal and unit in length. Now, to summarize what we just did, unit tangent vector, which again from the previous page is two thirds, two thirds, one third. Unit normal vector, no prime up there. That's a naughty prime. Negative one third, two thirds, negative two thirds. And finally, the binormal vector, which we got from the cross product that we just did, that is negative two thirds, positive one third, and positive two thirds. These three vectors form a special kind of set when they are mutually orthogonal and all unit in length. These get talked about more in linear algebra than they do in this class, but this is referred to as an orthonormal set, or you could also refer to this as an orthonormal basis. Again, used more in linear algebra than we will in this class, but these three vectors could form basically a, uh, a coordinate system similar to what we use with i, j, and k. i, j, and k are also all unit vectors that are mutually orthogonal to each other. You could consider this to be like a, a rotation of your coordinate system, something similar to what they might do in a physics class if you've got forces that are not acting up and down and rather they're going side to side. So thank you for bearing with me through my little physics and linear algebra rant there. Uh, that concludes this section.